Hi and hello, my name is uh, Georg Hinkel and in this short video I'm going to explain you how to create a client with um, the TCAN Sealer 2 SDK. So in the last video I've already shown you how to create a server, uh, in which case uh, it's, a, it's a very simple one that basically has just one feature, um, uh, one custom feature with just one command namely say hello which takes in the name of a person and creates a greeting. And what we basically want to do now is we want to uh, create a client for that. So the first thing is I'm going to add a new project, the client. Uh, name it um, uh, client. And this will also be um, a 3.1 um, console application. So I'm, I'm only uh, creating a, a small client and executing that via the console here. So for that, I basically have to uh, add some packages. And uh, because we are creating a client, you uh, can probably guess what we need. We, we need the tcan.sila2.client package. Now this comes with a couple of dependencies. Again, we have gRPC core, um, IP network, DNS, um, and the, the, the um, Celia2 and Celia2 gRPC um, packages. Uh, so I will also add the Celia2 3.2.1, such that I don't have to do any binding redirects. And the gRPC 3.2.1, so that we don't have binding redirects. And the contracts. Yep. Okay. And then next thing is again the code generator. Um, this is basically the output from the last uh, time where I um, uh, generated the server. I'll just clear the console. This time we can use Celia gen uh, command, and then we this time we will need a generic client. Now first, uh, call up the help for generate client. Um, so what, what we do need here is we need the path to the feature and the path to the C-sharp project where we want to uh, generate the, the, the provider to. And there's also um, an, a namespace provided um, that, we, oh, that, that we can, can, can set. So uh, gen, uh, generate client, then the path to the feature will be it's still in the server. We have the greeting service CLA, uh, XML and the path to the C sharp project where we need to, uh, where we want to generate the code to is the client CS part. And um, I'll just also add a namespace, name the hello CLA2 dot client. Yep. And what we get here is this folder that has three files. One is the interface that has been generated for us. Um, I mean, in this case, we could have also just used the, the, the interface from, this, from the contracts directly, but I mean, in the general case, you just have the uh, feature and uh, basically this is the, the interface that, that we will work with if we, um, uh, yeah, if we, uh, if we work with the server, the server package. We have again some DTOs to say, okay, how uh, is the request object uh, serialized and deserialized? How is the response object serialized and deserialized? And we have a client. This client is a class that implements the iGreeting service um, using two dependencies. One is an iClient channel instance, and one is a client execution manager. Now, how do we get those things? So um, what, what are they actually? 
So the client channel is basically the connection to a given server. Um, and the client execution manager is a component that basically adds metadata to requests. Uh, this is basically used to um, automatically uh, do things like, okay, if the service need, requires you to lock certain things, then, then you can basically hook in that uh, for, for each client command, you automatically lock the server, then execute the command, and then un unlock the server, uh, such that you can basically work with um, servers that, that, uh, that require locking without actually um, having to care about this. And the same goes with, with authentication, authorization, and other things. So it's basically machinery for, for the client to um, integrate um, cross-cutting concerns like locking or authentication. So um, how do we actually um, get the server. So the easiest way to, to get the server, so maybe first. Um, how do we find the server? The easiest way to find the server is using discovery. And for this, we create a new server discovery. And what we do is we need the logging and we need a connector. Okay. Uh, let's see what, what, what logging we can use. Um, actually, the, the, the easiest, so normally for the client, there is no predefined logging implementation because the console logging is something that we don't use at the client side. Um, we can actually just create um, a small console logging here. Normally, you would actually re reroute the logging to somewhere else. So, um, or maybe I think in the latest SDK, I could even have made this available. Let me check. So we don't have any configuration. We just return this. We don't do anything on this pause. And for now, let me just do this implementation for each different kind of lock. Okay. So we have the logging. And then we need a connector. So um, this will again also need an execution manager. So the default execution manager, which we can use because we don't have any metadata, we don't have any um, other stuff. So we can actually use the one for discovery. Okay, and the server connector will require the execution manager and the logging. Okay. If we have the discovery, what we can do is we can actually discover service. Uh, 
uh, get. So discover servers basically execute a discovery and get a call back uh, if a server was found. And um, yeah, and what we can also use uh, get servers that is basically on a given time out get me all servers that there are. Um, so I will look for maybe five seconds for every service that there are. So, um, and if we we have this the, the, the server, um, so let me let us basically take the first server that, that there is. So servers dot default. And then uh, create a client, namely a new greeting service, greeting service client uh, for the channel of the server, and then the execution manager, which we already have, because we don't have um, any metadata requirements. Then let's do a console right line of Client dot say hello. Yeah. And then uh, we of of course we need to start the server. So let me just uh, start the server without debugging. And then. I switch to startup project and go through this. Okay, so create a login, create an execution manager, create a discovery, then discover service. And this takes a bit, and you see some logs that, uh, like the, the the server ID is called uh, queried, and then you have some logs here that are um, for discovery. So there is some um, DNS messages messages sent back and forth, and we return that we have a collection of servers now here. We have one server that is, um, yeah, is a server 1.0. It has three features. Um, uh, and it's currently this UUID and stuff, and we have a channel. So let's take the server, create a client, and then do a console read line, uh, white line. And then there is hello client. You see, there's a couple of other uh, stuff up here. Um, some of this is because we basically did the um, uh, console logging. Some of this is because I, on my machine, I have the uh, gRPC trace enabled. So some uh, some uh, gRPC logs are here as well. Uh, you can deactivate that by by setting a command uh, an environment variable if you want to. Yeah. Okay. And this is basically how you do a client in the very basic form. In a later video, I'm also going to show you how you create a client if you don't know the server at, in, at compile time. So a, a, a dynamic client that dynamically adapts to the features that the server offers. Um, and also um, there's a separate videos how to cope with encryption and how to cope with um, metadata because now, right now we have this discovery execution manager. This basically works only if your server that you connect to doesn't support binaries, because then the disk discovery execution manager doesn't know how to, to transfer binaries, basically. And it also doesn't work if the server requires metadata. And how to do that, I'm going to show you in a, uh, in a different video. For now, thanks for listening.